Hi, I'm going to show you of the Bianca workshop, uh, the beginner Bianca course day. Uh, how to log in? There are two ways to log in Bianca already here. We can see the two different ways. One is a graphical remote desktop and one is a command line. And I'm going to show you um, the course material and how to go through it. So the objectives are, so I, I, I'm going to zoom in a bit, so, so the, is to observe that there are two ways to interact with Bianca. There are multiple ways to get inside SUNET, which is the university network. To log in into a, uh, to using a terminal to Bianca. And to log in to, oh, this is log in to a terminal in the Bianca remote desktop and to log in to the Bianca console environment, which is uses a terminal. So that's a text only environment, um, whereas the Bianca remote desktop looks like a remote desktop. So the exercise um, will direct you to our UpMax documentation. And the goal for this is that you will probably, we want you to feel comfortable reading that documentation, go through it instead of only using this course as a source for information. Because we want more people to read the documentation, ask questions and improve it, and it helps us check our documentation and keep it only in one place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going through these questions. That's all there is in this lesson. And we're going to see if we can find the answers to these questions in the documentation. Um, and we're going to try to be sloppy because we expect you to, to well, you have this problem and um, how does, uh, you, you're not going to read a page from top to bottom. You look selectively for the answer. So here, we I'm not even going to click this now. I'm going to go to question one directly. So these are like drop down boxes. So that means try to answer the, them yourself first and then check for the answer. So let's take a look at question one. Your colleague visits, this is the remote desktop website and sees nothing appear on the website. See also image above. Ah, right, so that's, this is the image above, apparently. So this is an empty website, there's nothing to be seen. Let's take a look at it. If I get that too, oops, I should get this too. And indeed, nothing happens. There's no website popping up. How can that be? Um, let's take a look at the documentation a bit. I'm going to close this tab now. And let's take a look at the documentation. If we somehow find this. Alright, I'm going to zoom out a bit because at the left it has uh, like an overview. Logging into prerequisites, the two Bianca environments, get within the university networks, get inside the Bianca environment, extra material. So this colleague that wanted to use Bianca went to this website and saw nothing. So I'm just going to copy this URL and, and search for it in the documentation. There. So this is already uh, here somewhere it's recommended. It, it means log in to the Bianca remote desktop environment. All right, here it says, as Bianca is an HPC cluster for sensitive data, one needs to be within SUNET to be able to access her. So I guess we need to be inside SUNET. Um, yeah, so th I guess that's the answer. How to get within SUNET. See, get inside the university network page here. Right, so I'm going to click this in a tab. And here it describes how to get inside the university networks. And I guess she didn't do this. I guess this colleague didn't do that. She's not within the university network. I don't know how you get inside that university network, but that is probably the problem. And that is right. Show him the section above on how to get into SUNET. So the section above is, uh, well, here, probably. I would I would share this URL um, because that's what he or she probably found and he or she should just read the part above it. Exercise two. Log in into the Bianca remote desktop environment. Well, that's what we're going to do now. So I already had that thing up. Um, so and, and if I now go in here, um, that doesn't work because you need to be within the university network. So let's take this page again. I just closed it. 
So there are apparently three ways to get inside the university network. Physically move inside SUNET, I'm not going to do that. I'm at home, I, I stay home. We can use a VPN or use an HPC cluster within SUNET. Well, I think most people, like I'm not, if you're at the university, that's easy, you're there already. Uh, I'm going to use a VPN. So I, at the left, I can also directly go there, I can scroll down, I just click here. Uh, let's take a look how to use a virtual private network or a VPN. Um, that's described here. A virtual VPN allows for access. So we need to go to this page, how to do that. Um, or, this is my favorite, just use these videos. Um, and I'm going to show you now how to uh, start the VPN. So to install it for Uppsala University, it's described here at this video. Um, it's also described at the University Network page, uh, University Uppsala pages themselves. Let's take a look. I think this is the Swedish version, uh, but of course you can click it to English. And here you see how to activate multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication. Uh, instead, I already have installed it. I'm just going to start what I have already. So you need to use Cisco. Um, this is you starting the VPN. You have to give your user identity, Rick B424. There. And now I need to use multi-factor authentication of Uppsala University. For that I use my mobile phone. Uh, I can't show this, you need Microsoft Authenticator, that's what they push a lot, so I have that. In Microsoft Authenticator, you need to um, you need to give your PIN to open it up, that's a safety precaution, like your mobile phone PIN code to get in. And there I see a line called Uppsala University in Swedish, and I see my account, Rick B424, and if I click on that I get like eight, uh, like six digits type it in here, I press enter, and now I'm on the VPN. So that is already done. So let's go back to, um, how, ca how do I know this? I see here at the top, I see that Cisco is active, I can click on this and it says that I'm connected. Right, so I'm on the VPN, that means I, the internet now thinks I'm, part, I'm in the university network. That's great. Now we can go to this website. There we go. This is the website. So suddenly it shows up. So my Upmax username is Richelle. That's on Upmax. And the project I want to work on, let's take a look at the notes. It's, it's called this project. This is like the project of the course. There it is. It even shows up. This is great. Here I need to give my Upmax password, so that's not my university, that's my Upmax password, uh, which you've set up, you needed to log in, you set, this up, you set this up on the super nice page, nice, there, this is where you set this thing up, your Upmax login, it's your, I'm going to type it in. Now I need another two-factor authentication code for uh, Upmax, because those are independent things. Because you can log into the VPN all over the world, um, and for Upmax only other, some people of that want that. So I go to a two-factor authentication app, and I click on a line that says Richel at Upmax, and I click, type in the number 360163, enter. And now I'm at the first page. Now I can just type in my password. I don't need two-factor authentication anymore. I'm in. And now I will see the remote desktop on Bianca. Um, this takes the app. There it is. Yep. So this is Bianca, um, a remote desktop. So this is a Linux remote desktop. And if I click here, I get the terminal. And we will be using the terminal more in the future. So it's starting up the terminal. There it is. I type ls to get all the files. You can do whatever you want. And here I have a terminal. 
Done. Well done. I'm gonna yeah. So I have this. Sometimes it says reconnecting. That's just fine. I'm gonna close it for now. I've done it. Next exercise. Start the terminal in the Bianca remote desktop. I just done that. Exercise four. Log in into the Bianca console environment. Let's take a look how that goes. So I take a look at the at the documentation. Note that I still remain within Sunet because I need to be that, else I cannot log in. So this will pop up regularly and sometimes I need to wait for it. Well, let's take a look at the documentation, how to get inside the Bianca environment. So there are two ways. There's a remote desktop environment. I've already been there. And there's a console environment. I'm going to click on this and see what happens there. Mm -hmm. That oh, it's just here down. Log into the Bianca remote desktop environment, and then it will be somewhere below there. Log into the Bianca console environment, and also here you need to be within Sunet. I am that. There are multiple ways to set it up. You need a terminal. Sure, I can do that. I don't use an SSH password. Um, we have limitations on the console environment. So how do I do this? So I'm not going to use the SSH password. I'm going to go down. And instead I'm going to use... Oh yeah, I do, I do, I do. I'm going to use... Well, whatever this is, I'm going to do this. Looks good to me. Um, yep, so let's do this. So I start a terminal. This is my regular computer terminal. SSH reshell dash... And I'm just reading here the project name. What's, what was that again? Cat notes. Wow, oh, nice. I'm going to use this text. SSH, that thing. Let's see if I can get it like below below the documentation there at bianca.upmax.uu.se there so it asks a password and you need to type it with two-factor authentication so my password is <laughs> now I need my upmax two-factor authentication again so I go to my to fact authentication app. For me it looks it displays the text reshell at upmax. I take a look at the number, I type it in 215083, enter. Note that you didn't see me type anything at all here. That's because my terminal doesn't do that. That's for safety. And now I need to use my regular upmax password. And now I am on Bianca. So I'm on the Bianca login node to be exact. And there it is. We can see that we are on the login node of our project. It's isolated because of safety. So I did that. Let's go back to the exercise. So I've logged in to the Bianca console environment. Um, that's great. Uh, I think I can close it because there's some questions here. So five. Your colleague finds out that one can run scripts with calculations directly on the login node. This saves his, him or her much time waiting for calculations to start. Is this okay and why? Let's take a look. What can we do on the login node? So we go to the documentation again. Login to Bianca. Uh, prerequisites. Get inside the Bianca environment. So let's see when we're logged in. I'm just going to scroll down. Fill in sector. Pick a remote desktop. You are in. Mm -hmm. Now there's a disconnect here. I've Where can we find what we can do on a login node? I'm going to search for the word login node. Mm -hmm. Prerequisites. Let's this so, so we need to get inside the Bianca environment and then we're on the login node. But it doesn't say very clearly that on the login node a, it's a shared node. So you're not sh so sh you should not do any complex calculations there. 
how could we have known this? It should be there more explicitly. Yeah, yeah. Here yeah, it says by default this node has one core, hence if you need more memory or more CPU power, you submit a job. Uh, yeah, and that is how you should do it. You don't you should do not do complex calculations here. Um, but I think it's not documented all too well here. Alright, let's take a look if the answer gives. Uh, th so the answer is, is, is here, and uh, that's great, it's what I just said. 6. You are developing code on Bianca. You write the code line by line and schedule a test after each edition. However, after each line it takes a couple of minutes before you know your code works, yes or no. How could you develop your code quicker? Yeah, so on a login note you should not do complex stuff. Instead you should submit your jobs or schedule your jobs. But that's a problem because you don't want to wait all the time. Well the answer is to use an interactive note. Can we find this? Interactive. Nope, you can't find this all too well. So maybe we need to click on the Bianca portal and we go to look for the word inter ah here starting an interactive node well this is where you can request a node to work on directly using interactive you also see that today um, but that is the answer so in this use case use the interactive nodes all right I've just gone through all the exercises in the part about logging into Bianca um, I wish you a very good day. Good luck finding the answers yourself. Later.